All right, guys, we got Bitcoin up today, 27,186. Ethereum, 16,663. Uh, XRP still hanging out that 50 cents mark. Not too shabby if you like XRP. Cardano, guess the, can anybody guess the price of Cardano? Anybody? Bueller, anybody? Anybody? 25 cents. Wow, that's a shocker. And of course, Solana, 19, and Litecoin, 65. Everything's looking pretty good. I don't know why we had a pump um, today, uh, you know, <laughs> especially with Gary Gensler um, testifying in Congress. I guess the big news that everybody's talking about, yes, there's not a lot of BitBoy news today, so we're going to talk about uh, something else. Um, Gary Gensler testified in Congress, uh, I, think, I believe it was yesterday, and I was actually quite shocked at how much of a douchebag <laughs> He looks like when he testifies, um, the guy is like, well, the, th the thing is what you have going on is the sentiment against him is just like, everybody hates him. And the great thing is it's either even Democrats hate him, Republicans hate him, independents hate him, space aliens hate him. I actually think this guy might be a space alien. He kind of looks like an alien. Um, I don't know. There's just something about him that looks very alien-ish to me. Um, actually the, the most interesting thing that I discovered is he has a twin brother. Who would have thought Gary Gensler has a twin brother? I mean, can you believe it? This is Gary Gensler's twin brother. Um, I mean, they look identical to me. This isn't like, like a great picture. He was a portfolio manager at T. Rowe Price. So another financial guy, uh, 596 million global stock funds plans to retire at the end of the year. So this is back in 2012. So this is an older picture, but here's some other pictures I found. I mean, here he is right here. He lives like near me. He lives in Maryland. I've never seen him out and about. I would definitely know if I saw this guy, Robert Gensler, Hunt Valley, Maryland. Man, that's like right near me. I don't know. There's no way he, this guy lives near me. I would have totally seen him out and about. That's weird. Anyway, so Gary <laughs> Gary Gensler has a twin brother. So anyway, I, I actually thought that was like the highlight of everything, but it really wasn't. So the highlight is everybody's been grilling Gary Gensler, and like no matter how much people grill him, he just doesn't give a shit. He's still cocky. He's still an asshole. Uh, the pressure doesn't seem to be getting to him. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna listen to a few clips, but everybody hates him. Like I'd say, like out of all the politicians, like. He's at like a 90% hate rate. And he's also at like a 90% loss rate, um, you know, with all his court cases too. Securities regulation because you are kneecapping the U.S. capital markets with the avalanche of red tape coming out of your commission on your climate. De what? I'm trying to watch Mr. this. Mr. Chairman, I, I really liked your colorful uh, testimony. Uh, and you're right, we are blessed with the largest, most sophisticated, most innovative capital markets in the world. But we cannot take this for granted. Even a gold medalist must keep training. With all due respect, Mr. Chairman, if the U.S. capital markets are a gold medalist, you are the Tanya Harding <laughs> of securities regulation because you are kneecapping hey. the U.S. capital markets. With oh, that's pretty harsh. Yeah, I mean, and it's a lot more just like that. I've never seen anything like this before where, like, he, the guy is, like, so hated. Here's another one right here. This is two minutes. You know, frankly, your time as chairman has highlighted two problems, a Gary Gensler problem and a structural flaw in the SEC. Wow. And as I told you in April, I proposed a solution called the SEC Stabilization Act. Uh, you're, you're making the case for this bill easier every day you are acting as the chairman uh, by doing rulemaking after rulemaking without any regard to the impact of these rules, or maybe that's the feature for you, I don't know. Uh, but it's having a massive impact on our markets. I mean, we have markets that truly are the envy of the world, and why would you disrupt them uh, you know, with, with processes that are driving capital out of our markets? Not because to avoid our laws, but to find some place where they can get clarity, where they can work with a regulator and get a decision and a path forward. So instead of selectively applied, you you are short. You're not providing clarity with a rule that's evenly applied. You're intentionally shortening comment periods to limit feedback, and the courts have even called this arbitrary and capricious. You're push. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of everything that's going on right now with Gary Gensler, uh, you can pretty much blame, blame Sam Bakeman Freed. Um, we're gonna actually talk about Sam Bakeman Freed in a minute, but you know, Gary Gensler was really, really. Um, getting close with Sam Bakeman Freed. And Sam Bakeman Freed was really getting to the point where he, he was going to get Gary Gensler to, to approve some shit, you know, get some stuff done. And I think Gary Gensler got so burned by, by Sam Bakeman Freed, he's just like, I don't trust any of these motherfuckers anymore. Like, Sam Bakeman Freed's kind of like, you know, like, a, like, a, you, you, like your wife cheated on you or something like that. And it's like, I don't trust women anymore, or vice versa. Like... He just doesn't want anything to do with crypto anymore. He hates it all. He's taking everything out that Sam Bankman Free did, and he's taking it out on all of crypto. And I totally get that because, you know, the way I see it with Gary Gensler, he didn't, he wasn't totally in on the whole crypto thing anyway. He's like, well, you know, most of them are scams, and maybe we can do something about it. Then Sam Bakeman Free came in, and I really think that Gary Gensler was just like, well, this guy's not too bad. You know, he's probably one of the good ones. Maybe I can work out something with him. And then Sam Bakeman Free turned out to be the biggest fraudster of all time, the biggest crypto fraudster of all time. And I, like I said, I think Gary Gensler is just like scared. And he's like, you know what? I can't work with these people. I don't like these fucking people. Uh, if I approve anything, in five years, it's going to probably tank and go to zero, and grandma's going to lose all her money, which I agree with. I agree with on that. But you have to come out. You, you have to work with these crypto companies and come out with something, regardless of what happens down the line. American citizens have a right to invest in whatever they want. There has to be clarity. But I think Gary Gensler's at the point now where he's like, fuck it. I just, you know, <laughs> he's like just so dumb with crypto. He's like, I'm not... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be here as long as you want me. I'm going to collect my salary, but I'm not giving an inch on anything crypto related. Um, and I think another reason might be, and this is all speculation, that there might actually be some dirt on Gary Gensler with how he was showboating with um, Sam Bakeman Freed, which hasn't come out yet. And if he does approve anything crypto related, people are going to say, well, you approved it because, you know, you were kissing ass with Sam Bakeman Freed. I don't know. I just feel like this whole, there's, a, there's more behind the scenes that we don't know but on the surface it just looks like gary gensler was burned so bad with crypto and the whole the whole sec was they just don't want to deal with it i mean you have to go back a year folks i mean everything collapsed BlockFi, celsius ftx i mean everything everything your favorite loser cryptocurrency guys were promoting to you and yes there are losers just because somebody makes a lot of money promoting a scam that doesn't mean they're a winner like george from cryptos are us promoted you every scam in a book and he got rich off it. Is that a winner? I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm somewhat religious guy. I kind of feel like that's not going to work out too good for you, um, you know, at, in the end when you're on your deathbed. And you never even apologized for it. Same with BitBoy, same with Crypto Banter. They sold you out. And I've been saying that for a long time. So, you know, all Gary Gensler has to do is watch a YouTube video and see what's going on. I mean, anybody can just be like, wow, everybody in YouTube... Every social media guy in crypto is a scammer. Like, and it, they are. It's true. Like 90% of them. All the successful um, YouTube uh, crypto people are all scammers. They're all selling you something. All of them. So I kind of see where Gary Gensler is coming from. Here's another video. Your view on Bitcoin, you've, you've made comments on this. You believe Bitcoin is, is not a security. Is that true? Well, I think the staff, the SEC have also uh, and the well, I'm here. just asking you this question, and this is not a gotcha. I thought this was going to be an easy softball into harder questions. Do you think Bitcoin is a security? <laughs> no, I think I've said this in the past that I think that it doesn't I'm asking you to how answer my question now. This is not supposed to be hard. I, I know. I said it's it does not meet the Howey test, which is the, the okay. law of the land about being so an investment. It doesn't meet the Howey test. Security. So, therefore, it's a commodity. Is that fair? I, I, I would say it's not a security, and then the test is otherwise for other uh, right. laws. So even even when he says it's not a security, he has to say, well, it's not a security, but maybe it's something else. Like, I don't know. Like, the guy's such a douche, but I, I, I understand where he's coming from. So I guess that's why Bitcoin pumped yesterday. Bitcoin pumped yesterday because Gary Gensler probably came out again and said, well, it's not a security. Every time Gary Gensler says it's not a security, you know, Bitcoin goes up th 3 to 5%. But we already know that Bitcoin's not a security. Litecoin's not a security. Um, we know Ripple is now not a security. I was convinced it was going to be, but it's not. And he said Ethereum's not a security. Bitcoin Cash is not a security. Essentially, any like proof of work legacy coin is not a security. So anything else here? 
It's this one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Gensler, good morning. Um, I, I worry that the term investment contract has become so infinitely malleable and manipulable that it means whatever you unilaterally thinks it ought to mean. Right? I worry that when it comes to crypto, your interpretation of the term investment contract has no limiting principle and therefore could invite arbitrary and capricious enforcement action. So I want to take a few minutes to explore the concept of investment contract in greater depth. And I want to start with an obvious definitional question. We know that an investment contract requires an investment. Does an investment contract require a contract? Um, you know, something about this definition, I will quote Thurgood Marshall, Congress painted with a broad brush. And when Marshall said that, he was writing the law of the land. So we follow this how we test and how not just Marshall, but other courts interpreted it. And it has a four-part, four-component. I, 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 again, I did not go to MIT, but in the Bronx, if I ask whether an investment contract includes an, a contract, the answer is typically yes or no. So, well, the, Actually, sir, uh, under the Supreme Court law of the land, they do not write that in. They say it's an investment of money uh, in a common enterprise, and you're anticipating uh, uh, profits based on the efforts of others. So I... I'm, I took an oath to, to follow the law of the land, and that's the Supreme Court law of the land. So the, in, in, in Howie, the Supreme Court refers to an investment contract as a contract, scheme, or transaction. That was the terminology that I saw in the case. And as far as I can tell, there's nothing in the Supreme Court's jurisprudence that suggests that a scheme or a transaction means the absence of a contract. And so by way of illustration, you know, consider the landmark case of SEC versus Howie. In the Howie case, it was not a single contract, but there were two contracts, a land sales contract with the Howey Company and a service contract with Howey in the Hills. And the court found that the combination of those two contracts, the total scheme, the total transaction, the total economic reality, uh, was constitutive of an investment contract. And so a scheme or a transaction does not mean the absence of any contract at all. It means, as it did in Howey, a multiplicity of contracts. Uh, in August, there were six law professors from law schools as preeminent as Yale who came to the following conclusion, quote, no decision of the Supreme Court has ever found that a scheme that does not involve a contract could qualify as an investment contract. And so do you disagree with that statement? And if so, could you please cite a decision of the Supreme Court that has found an investment contract in the absence of an actual contract? The SEC has been in front of multiple courts, and uh, investment contract has been... Uh, What's the name of the case, Mr. Gensler? I'm, I'm the Supreme Court case that has found an investment contract in the absence of an actual contract. Do you have the name? Can you cite a case? The, the SEC, over the decades, whether it's... Can you Chief cite a case? Lewis, whether it's okay. whiskey casket... And I love how when he can't answer a question, he just keeps on talking. Anyway, this continues. Um... I don't know, like, then, then this guy, this uh, representative asked Gary Gensler, like, well, if I buy a Pokemon card, is that, like, a security? And Gary Gensler's like, well, no, it's not. But he's like, well, how about if I buy a digital tokenized um, Pokemon card? And Gary Gensler's like, well, I don't know. I need, I need to know more about it. So it's like, essentially, you can do whatever you want as long as it's not on crypto. If it's crypto, ah, I'm not going to say I'm, – I'm only going to say negative things. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, well – if you're like, if you buy a Pokemon card, or I guess that's a bad example. Say I buy a baseball card, and I'm expecting that baseball player to do a good job because if he does a good job, my player is going to go up. When I was like 10 years old, I used to collect baseball cards not because I liked baseball, but because I figured out you could make money collecting baseball cards. Like I would like buy cards, like upper deck cards and stuff like that, and there'd be like these black diamond cards in there. And my friend and I figured out a way to be able to tell if those black diamond cards were in a pack. Anybody from the 90s probably knows this. Um, I forget what they were called. And some of those cards were worth like 20 or 30 bucks. So you spend $1.50 for a pack, and then you get 20 bucks back if you get this card. And every one of these cards was at least worth $5. So no matter what, if you bought a pack for $2, you're getting minimally $5. So you're making $3. When you're a 10-year-old kid, that's a lot. $3, you know... That's a lot of candy, especially, you know, five cent candy, 10 cent candy back in the 80s and 90s. So does that mean I was doing a security because I was expecting that baseball player to do a good job? Like the whole thing doesn't make any sense. It falls apart when you actually delve into it. So the only look, the only thing we can hope for is that Gary Gensler um, 
probably only has a year left. And if, Tr if Donald Trump gets elected, one of the first things that's going to happen, he's probably going to fire Gary Gensler. And Donald Trump is up in the polls. But even if a liberal gets elected, once Gary Gensler's term is up, I don't think they're going to bring him back. There's too much hate. A lot of these guys are Democrats too, because a lot of Democrats like to make money in crypto as well. Which is why I always get so like weirded out. Like like a lot of these, some of these crypto YouTubers are really hardcore liberals, and they they vote for like politicians who are essentially like voting against their best interest. It's like if you live in New York City and you're into crypto, but you're voting for liberal Democrats, like they don't want crypto in New York City. Like what are you doing? Like it's like it's like being a Jew in World War II voting for Adolf Hitler. Like you're voting against your best interest. So the good news is with a, with a Republican, even if a Republican doesn't like crypto, Republicans are more like, well, I don't like crypto, but just do the fuck, do, do whatever you want, man. Like that's, that's the rep Republican mentality. You want to trade crypto? Trade crypto. You want to trade dog shit? Trade dog shit. That's fine. But a Democrat who doesn't like crypto, yeah, you'll get the Democrat who likes crypto. Oh, oh, I like it. Blah, blah. But the Democrat who doesn't like crypto wants you not to be able to trade it. They want to shut that shit down. That's the difference. Even Donald Trump, you ask Donald Trump, what do you think of Bitcoin? Oh, I believe in the US dollar. Yeah, that's what you should say as the president because you're in charge of the country and the dollar is the currency. But if you were to tell, ask Donald Trump, well, should Bitcoin be banned? He'd be like, no, like that's stupid. But a Democrat politician who doesn't like Bitcoin, like Maxine Waters, whoever, they're going to be like, well, ban it, ban it. So that's why, I mean, if you're into crypto and you want to make money this next bull run, I mean, I cannot imagine voting, like voting for a Democrat. Like if you don't like crypto, I get it. But, you know, anyway, so that was the highlights of that. There's more, but I'm not going to play them all. Um, quick note on BitBoy. He has not posted anything on Twitter. Um, he still has this guy living in his house doing the shows. And what, it was on the 20... Well, I think he, he actually said on the 26th, on the 26th, he said he was going to take a break, but he couldn't help himself and he reposted something on the 27th, but he hasn't really posted anything. So good job, BitBoy. Let's see how much longer you longer you can last. And there was one other thing I want to talk about. Oh, judge denies temporary release for Sam Bakeman Freed. Suggests he could face a very long prison sentence. Well, no shit. Bankman Freed's lawyers have requested that he be released for the duration of his trial to ensure that he's able to review materials and speak with his counsel. This came out a couple weeks ago where Sam Bankman Freed's like, well, the internet connection in jail sucks. You know, I'm not used to that. Like what, what balls on this guy? And I've always said, Sam Bakeman Freed is your typical rich kid liberal. You know, I know I know plenty of rich kids, and all the liberal ones were with it's silver spoon. They could do whatever they want. Their parents let them do whatever they want. Um, and they just they all turned out, every single one of them had turned has turned out to be a piece of shit. They're all working for some hedge fund right now, or they're selling freaking insurance. And they're just a slime of the earth. And then the, the friends I have who, who grew up conservative, I have friends who grew up multimillionaires. And they're all like, their parents, but their parents didn't spoil them. They, they had a you know tight schedule. They had to be in at six o'clock every night. Um, if they did something wrong, their fathers would like literally beat the shit out of them. Like there was like no games. Like I'm not, I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm saying there were like rules and consequences um, in the conservative of Republican households, but the Democrats, they were allowed to do what they want. So Sam Bickman Freed is the perfect example of a liberal Democrat, spoiled rich kid allowed to do whatever he wants. Looks like a lot of the money that he was uh, making, he was even funneling back to his degenerate liberal asshole um, college professor parents. So, I mean, it's just one big crime family. And that, like I said, that's your typical liberal, de liberal Democrat. I fully expect him to get 20 or 30 years, but we'll see what happens. But like the audacity of this guy. All right, so that's it. Um, we talked about Gary Gensler. Bitcoin's still up a bit. I mean, I don't know. We'll probably go back down to like twenty six or something. Who knows? I don't even know. I'm not even. I'm not even doing like short term price predictions anymore. It's just not even worth it. Um, but look, you know, we still got everything is just boring now and hanging out where it's been for the last couple months. Even when Bitcoin gets these little pops, altcoins really don't follow. Ethereum did. Ethereum, you know, had a nice little pop, which well, I think that's extremely bullish for Ethereum. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty much hanging out. Let's see if there's anything else in the top 50 that's actually up crazy. 
Mm -mm -mm. Lido. I don't know anything about Lido, but they're they're up eight percent. I mean, that's really it. Yeah, I mean, that's really it. What is Bitcoin? Let me see what Bit, uh, Bitcoin Cash is doing. I know I know they're up a little bit because they pump. Bitcoin Cash pumps with Bitcoin. Where the freak is Bitcoin Cash? It's that low now. Oh my! I remember when Bitcoin Cash used to be number four. Are you serious? What? Is Bitcoin Cash not in the top 50 anymore? Oh, there it is. Okay, so Bitcoin Bitcoin Cash is up just like Ethereum, 5%, and Litecoin is up 2%. See, Litecoin should be up at least 5% too because Litecoin is not a security as well, according to uh, Gary Gensler. Overall, boring day, not a lot going on. We got a little bit of a pump. Gary Gensler, everybody hates him. You got to look at the writing on the wall, guys. Gary Gensler's reign of terror is like done. It's like, I mean, like he might, he might hold out for another year. He might do some, some actions, but even the freaking judges are sick of him and all the politicians are sick of him. So, um, as we go into that bull market, you're probably going to see Gary Gensler leaving his post. Somebody else is going to come in. We're going to get that Bitcoin ETF approved, and we're all going to live happily ever after.